All right, everybody. This is Austin of the Best I Can Afford Antiques channel. Uh, you know, <laughs> we're just always trying to buy the best things we can afford. Uh, here we are, you know, a, a day, a day after we pick up all the stuff from that little auction, right, where we spent $1,000. And we go out and we were just going to grab, you know, grocery store stuff. We were doing a real regular people morning sort of thing. And then we saw a garage sale. And my wife was like, well, you know, I mean, what if there's something, what if there's something there that's like crazy valuable? <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I, I really doubt it as we're pulling up to it and stopping. Um, you know, so then we had already started going to garage sales. So why not keep going to garage sales? So yesterday we went to garage sales. I'm not going to show you my antiques room right now. Because there are like boxes. There are boxes of stuff that I don't have anywhere to put. I <laughs> I don't I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> uh, yeah, so so we went to garage sales. Uh, and I was like, listen, we can't buy anything big because we don't have anywhere to put it. So if you see anything like small that's super neat then we can buy that but we can't buy like a big painting or furniture or anything and which I mean, we can never buy furniture we do not have room for furniture at any point in time uh, <laughs> this room is jammed so I haven't even shown you all the stuff that I got from that auction but I might as well show you the stuff that I got at garage sales yesterday right so some of these things are pretty interesting we got a Sears Kenmore button holder. You know what? It looked vintage and it looked like it was a sewing thing, so I I went ahead and got it. I'm sure we didn't pay much for it. It's a little bit rusty, but that'll all clean up, I'm sure. A button holder. So I don't know if it it must uh put holes in the clothes for the buttons as opposed to putting buttons holes in them right I'm just not sure I'm gonna set this on this glove or refrigerator box sitting right there I got this little uh, lacquered wood box honestly it was so fancy I was like okay I mean this was two dollars so I mean I don't know I don't know what lacquered wood is really worth it's not an extraordinarily valuable thing but that's a pretty handsome little box right there um yeah, some of this stuff's going to be a little weird. I do a lot of tools and stuff because I'm a mechanic, so some of these things I just find interesting. This is from k, k Diamante, I assume is what the rest of it should say, and made in Germany. And it's an oddly shaped whetstone. It should be to sharpen um, maybe like curved things like a sickle or a scythe. But yeah, I mean that's a pretty quality made old thing. It's got another little whetstone to actually use. We got an old drill. I mean, we did not pay more than, you know, five or seven dollars for any one of these things. But this is a pretty old drill. I would I would think early nineteen hundreds at the latest. And it's got a little uh a pretty neat little uh whirly gig gear there. So yeah, I don't know. I liked it. <clears throat> it still uh, turns freely and everything. It's still got its handle. <clears throat> Look at this, man. So this is a uh, this is a pipe or tube cutter, right? Now I've got you know a couple of pipe and tube cutters because I cut brake line and stuff, but but this is about the one of the nicest tools I've ever seen I mean it is just like stainless steel it's I mean constructed perfectly Japanese tools I mean you can't mess with them Germans and Japanese people they make excellent excellent tools so yeah I mean I figured I saw this and it couldn't have been more than a dollar so I grabbed it and somebody will be super happy to have this actual Japanese pipe cutter I mean because it's a it's a real precision instrument. I mean, look at these rollers for the for the pipe. I mean, geez. So yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I know that's probably not an antique. I do think it's a vintage thing, and uh, you know, 
sometimes tools are worth their weight in gold. I'm telling you that right now. Got some, what I can tell are plastic thimbles. I've never seen a plastic thimble before. These aren't the actual prices I paid. I think they put everything together and they gave me like a like a bulk price. Old buttons. Don't be passing up old buttons, I'm telling you right now. There's some that are worth like thousands of dollars. If you see old military buttons, you grab them. So I just bought all this old uh, sewing stuff. It was basically like a sewing kit. Old What's that say? Beakless? Beagles? Oh, buckles. Jeez. Uh, <laughs> thought it was two E's. They are old buckles. That one there is pretty fancy. Oh, and you know, I think the big one next to that fancy one was actually wood. Yeah, I think that's wood. It's kind of neat. <clears throat> Um, I don't know what this is. Some buttons. Um, looks like maybe maybe a tube full of sewing needles. People pay money for sewing kits, and it makes sense because not only are they pretty neat, you know, especially vintage sewing stuff. But oh, this thimble's like broken in half. Plastic thimbles. Whose idea was that? I don't know. I don't know, buddy. I guess they're just advertising thimbles. The company is new made and then well I don't know. Holy lord, look at this acronym here. P T P F T W Jeez Jeez Lord. W T T Y P. If anyone knows what that stands for, I'd be happy to learn about it, but good lord. This one says margarine. I don't know why you'd have a plastic symbol that said margarine. That's kind of a neat little like collection of things. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Did I get one maraca in this lot of sewing stuff? I don't know what that is. I assume it has something to do with sewing. Uh, witch needle threader. It looks like maybe that's like a whole little box of those because I've never seen a needle threader take up that much space. Um... Flower fashioners. I don't know. I don't know what that means. Small holes. Two gajo flower fashions. Six ten and six eleven. Uh, again, I don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't know what's in that bag at all. Apparently, so so I'll have to come back at that and actually look at it. I'm gonna save that little package. Some big old buttons. Come on now. Vintage goat buttons, maybe. Oh, maybe they're uh, goat horn. I don't know. I can't quite tell. Buttons aren't super, super interesting for a video, though. So we'll, uh... Fashion quality needle book. 115 needles. So, yeah, I like old vintage sewing stuff. And uh, I've heard that it's a good thing to buy, you know, for reselling. And I think this is all nice and vintage. And there's several, like, packages still in their original containers and stuff. So, yeah, I think people like some of this stuff quite a bit. If they're into sewing and so on. <clears throat> um, we got a tiny Celadon vase. Little cranes on him. Even a little signature. Or mark, at least. Apparently that can mean brothel in Chinese, so... <laughs> Thanks, Jodas. <laughs> it's a very handsome little piece, though, isn't it? I don't know. I don't know. It might be worth the $10 I paid. It might be worth more. I don't know. I'll have to... I'll have to see who wants to give me the most money for it. <clears throat> um. Oh, yeah. Good Lord. I, uh... Where did I put it? Oh. 
no big deal, but I think I bought a Murano glass piece for uh, for $16 yesterday. And man, if that doesn't catch your eye. You know, this was sitting out in the sunshine. Hundreds of people had walked by it. It was $16. How did you not pick that up before me? We got there at like 3 o'clock in the afternoon or something. 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock. Which means literally this huge garage sale had been going on for like two days. And genuinely, maybe like hundreds of people walked past this. And I was the only one that was like, is that Murano? <laughs> is that is that maybe worth more than $16 to anyone? Because I think probably, right? Yeah, that's a bit of a dish right there. I'm talking Greta Garbo. Oh! <laughs> All right. 